So given this function with the slope of the tangent line at three, that's just the derivative. When you have to derive this, keep in mind, I mean, you can do the quotient rule if you want. I'd recommend against it. That's the same thing as that, right? So the slope of the tangent line of f at three, which they can't really give you a question like that this year because you're gonna have a calculator the whole time. Um, but we gotta find f prime of x. So I imagine I'll, they, they might make you derive a few things, but it's gonna be like, I don't know if you remember this, where they make stuff like h of g of x squared and ask you for the first or second derivative of that or something, where you just have, where you don't know what h or g is and you gotta derive just using symbols. All right, but anyway, this is gonna be negative three times that to the negative two, which just puts it back down the bottom, times the derivative of the inside, which is four x minus seven. Right, so f prime of three, which is what they want, slope of the tangent line of three, yeah, it's just negative three times 12 minus seven is five over, what's that, nine, 18 minus 21, is that negative three plus five? That's two squared is four, does that sound good? Negative 15 fourths, it's part A. Okay, uh, B. Find the x-coordinate of each critical value. Classify each critical point as a local min, local max, or neither. So keep in mind, if you're asked to explain local min or relative min or max, the way you do that is you show the derivative changes from either positive to negative or negative to positive. But if you're asked to find an absolute max or just a maximum on a closed interval, like if they said find the max from one to six, that's when you need, you set the derivative equal to zero, you solve it, Right, you get some values here, boom, boom, and then you find the y value. So it doesn't matter about the change in the derivative necessarily. Okay, you have to show that you checked all the possibilities. That's an absolute max. Okay, now if they don't give you endpoints, um, then you got to talk about the sign changing. Okay, but if they ask for a local min or local max in general, you're going to talk about the sign changing. So they gave us endpoints, but they're not included. Um, we want to find all the critical values. Critical point of f on the interval, blah, blah, blah. So we got to derive it, which we already did. That's over here, right? So let me just uh, steal that. Copy. Okay, getting a little wonky on me here. Boom. What? Why would I want it like that, computer? How, how, how did you come across that? Dummy. Whatever. You got to find f prime of x <laughs> equals... I forget what I had already. It's negative three times what? Four X minus seven over two X squared minus seven X plus five. Critical values happen if F prime of X equals zero. So that's solving this, right? That's gonna give me that X equals seven fourths. All right, which is 1.75, and that's in our window. It's terrible. There we go. All right, because we're going up to 1 to 2.5. And they also happen. And f prime of x is undefined. Okay, which means we need this to be 0. But it has to make the original function defined. Um, so that's going to actually... So anything that makes that zero is going to make our original function undefined. So these aren't going to count as a critical values, if that makes sense. Okay. Remember, a critical value has to make the derivative zero or undefined, but make the original function defined. So again, since I'm trying to find out where this is squared, but where the denominator is zero, and since the original function has the same denominator, these are not going to be critical values. Okay. So we don't even need to finish that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you want to write something here. You can just skip it all together, right? This makes f undefined. So there's none from there. Okay. So the only critical value is 1.75. And what we did in class is we always do like a little sign chart, which is a little number line here. So we're going from, it doesn't really matter, 1.75, but they want us to go between 1 and 2.5, and that doesn't particularly matter. 
it might matter to find out where this is zero, just so we know where, where this could change sign. Just so I know a little more. This factor is in a 2x and an x, right? We got to get to what? Negative 7. So it's minus 5 plus 1. Right? Minus 10. No, that's not right. What am I? These are both minuses. Good God. This is a 1 and this is a 5. There we go. <laughs> minus 2, minus 5. Okay. So the zeros of this are going to happen at x equals 1 and x equals 5 halves, oh, which is the values they gave me. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we just got to see what's happening here. So essentially what's going to happen when, when you check these, you can put in like 1.7 and 1 1.9 or something like that, or 2 if you want. But here's what's going on. This whole derivative is made up of a negative 3, which is a negative number, times 4x minus 7 over something squared, which is a positive number. Okay, so the only thing that can really change sign is that 4x minus 7. And, you, and it changes sign at 1.75. That's what we found. So if you plug in something less than 1.75, you're going to get a negative, which makes this whole thing positive. And if you plug in something greater than 1.75, you're going to get a positive, which makes this whole thing negative. Okay? So you're going to write, this is a min since don't say it don't say whatever don't say look at the number line you got to write this out since f prime of x changes not a min what am i doing a max since f prime of x changes from positive to negative at okay so hopefully that's not hard either um Man, they even did the partial fractions for you on this question. How nice is that? Nicer than me in class, right? Yeah, give me this. So let's do this, and I'll do the last one, and then we'll call it a day here. 45 minutes for a whole week. All right. Um, so basically, we're going to integrate this from 5 to infinity and show it diverges, but they gave us this dumb thing. So it's 5 to infinity of uh, what, 2 over 2x minus 5, 2, why are you not writing a 2 in this spot for some reason? Okay, minus 1 over x minus 1 dx is the same thing as, you can do it this way, as b goes to infinity, right? You want to separate this out and write as a limit. Um, but you can also integrate it too at the same time. So that's if you integrate that first thing, you're just going to get ln absolute value 2x minus 5 minus ln x minus 1. And that's going from 5 to b, technically. Cool. And you can put that into a fraction, which is super duper sweet. So b is still headed towards infinity, right? But this is the... Whoa, this is the same thing over here as the ln of the absolute value of 2x minus 5 over x minus 1. So I'd probably write it like that. So it's ln, and we're plugging in b to that. My pen is having a hard time. So it's ln of 2b minus 5 over b minus 1, if that makes sense. Um, what they show this diverges? infinity minus infinity. Why does it diverge? Does that 2 not go away? No, 2 has to go away when you drive it, right? 1 over that times 2. That looks good. 2 over 2 minus 5. Boom. Am I missing something? Help me out here, kids. Is that going to become ln of 2? Am I Am I wrong? Can't turn your mic off. I gotta look at your message. Ugh. Well, I know that. I know the five fours, but it says that the integral diverges. But if we're getting an answer, like I, I know we have to do the minus the ln of uh, you're plugging a five, right? Smith. Yeah. 
It says or show that the integral diverges. It says evaluate or show it diverges. Oh, man. I'm just not reading. Yeah, I, obviously it's show that the integral diverges. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So good. So it's not that I can't do math. It's that I can't read. Perfect. So this then becomes ln. If b goes to infinity, this is a 2. There we go. Is that better? Which you could put that together if you want to, but you guys leave it like that. Okay? That's right. No, nobody got any qualms with that? Okay. And for fun, they snuck in a little series part here, so that's what you guys asked about in the first place. Um, determine whether the series converges or diverges. State the conditions of the test used for determining. Well, they just made us do this integral, <laughs> and then they're giving us the same exact series. So what we're going to say is that it's going to converge um, by the integral test, but we got to say a couple things for, for that to happen, okay? So for D, D, you'd write let, left, Jesus, let of x equal um, whatever this whole series already. 3 over 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 over 2x squared minus 7x plus 5, which is equal to 2 over something and 1 over something. What was it? x minus 1 and 2x plus 5 minus 5. Boom, right? Minus. Is that right? So that's good. Okay. Um, because this is so basically to write out the rule for an integral test right a continuous fun oh, continuous positive function right get out of here decreasing in value to zero, I can use the integral test. Come on, Penn. And all the integral test says is if the integral converges, the series converges, as long as these conditions are met here. Since, it also says the same thing in diverging. Since the integral from five to infinity Oh, man, I need a battery. Of uh, 3 over 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 dx converges. Um, C part C, perhaps. The summation from 5 to infinity of 3 over 2n squared minus 7n plus 5. It's okay, guys. Uh, converges. And again, I'll be redundant by integral test. All right. How are we feeling now? I'm getting frustrated with this dome stylus.